Welcome to Dark Sorcery. I'm Alfredo Martinez, and I have with me once again, Anton Mastroani. Anton, it's great to have you on again, brother. Thank you, bro. It's always an honor to be on. Yeah, and uh, Dark Sorcery, Cult of Belial, hooking up again, you know, cross-promotion, that's how we do it. And today we're going to be talking about astrology, and this is going to be um, unique. We're going to uh, talk about the shadow side of each sign as well. But let's go ahead and talk about the origins of astrology. So um, if you, you know, do research, uh, I guess astrology goes back 20,000 years into the paleo uh, Paleolithic um, drawings and carvings of walls, and rocks, indicating so. Uh, would you say that's accurate? I would say that's um, very accurate, uh, as well as um, the stars themselves. You know, you've right. got um, constellations that sort of relate to these uh, zodiac signs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, modern day astrology, uh, according to history, was born in 331 BC when Alexander the Great invaded Babylon and introduced Babylonian astrology to the Greeks and the Greeks uh, and Greek mathematics and astronomy to the Babylonians. And that mixture kind of gave us what Western astrology has. Um, now, one thing I do want to, uh, I want to talk about is there's different types of astrology. So you have Western astrology, you have, uh, Chinese astrology, and then you have, uh, the Vedic system, you know, and they're different. Now, in your opinion, would you say that one is more accurate than the other or not so? I haven't looked into, um, a lot of the other ones. I've just gone off right. the general you know, um, Leo, Cancer, Libra, all yeah. that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, but just going off what I would um, feel, I don't think one is more valid or better than the other. I mm. feel all should be taken into consideration and studied. Yeah, I, I agree with that because um, the Japanese have a saying that goes, um, there are many paths to the top of the mountain. And just because one person has a certain point of view, doesn't mean that the other person's point of view is wrong, you know, as long as they both get to the top of the mountain. Um, I like to look at different um, cultures, astronomy, just uh, astrology, excuse me, uh, just to see their point of view. Because I think that by looking at different points of view, we can learn something instead of just keeping it one sided. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. I agree with that. It's always, um, good to look through other perspectives or different mm -hmm. types of perspectives because perspective is power, really. And there's yeah. no need to limit ourselves to just a singular perspective. Mm -hmm. 100%, 100% agree. Now, one thing that I do want to talk about is uh, the star of Bethlehem in the Bible. Now, I'm convinced that the three wise men were astrologers. Um, and I'm going to tell you why. So if you if you rewind the uh, you know the stars the way they were aligned in the Middle East um, at that time, uh, so Pisces at the time Pisces uh, ruled jo uh, Judea. To a lot of people, Saturn uh, signified the Jews. Uh, Jupiter uh, signified kingship. So if an astrologer at that time in the Middle East was to look in the sky and study the stars, they, a lot of people would read the king of the Jews was being born in Judea. Okay. So, you know, that would, that's what a lot of astrologers would have gotten the way they would have interpreted it. And then they would have gone to see what the hype was all about. Um, now in, if you take a look at seven BC, I'm, I'm convinced it's okay. I'm convinced okay. that um, if Jesus really did exist, his true birth year would have been 7 BC. Because if you take a look at 7 BC, um, there's a conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn in Pisces at that time. Um, now, that would have been his date of birth. Now, what do you think about all that? Hmm. I haven't really read much into um, that, but it mm -hmm. would definitely be 
sort of after um, Mesopotamian time, 100%. Yeah. But even looking back, um, a lot of it is derived from previous history, like mm. um, going off biblical stories, the, um, the flood story right. is based off um, the Epic of Gilgamesh. Mm. Um, but beyond that, I haven't read too much into it. Okay. Well, I just wanted to, to comment on the video. That's interesting. It does tie into astrology, you know, before we get into the different signs. Um, now, would you agree that your sun sign, your moon sign, and your ascendant or rising sign are the top three to pay attention to? I believe they're all to be paid attention to um, because they all sort of seep or leak or interlink with each other. Mm -hmm. For example, the, um, the moon uh, sign, yeah. it's your emotions, how your emotional side is, how you are um, by yourself when you go through things. Yeah. But Mars is also the um, one of aggression, pa passion, um, aggression, it's uh, anger. That's going to, your Mars sign is going to leak through to your moon sign and then it's going to filter through your sun sign, your ego, right? So they're all going to interlink and sort of mingle with each other to produce the outcome, sort of, so mm -hmm. to speak. Well, it's the, not, one is not limited to the specifics of their uh, signs in the navel chart. Right. For example, my star sign is um, Libra. So I'm quite uh, political, um, balanced, uh, fair. I like, to, I like to avoid conflict when I can, but when conflict right. arises, it's, it's go time, you know? Yeah, I can relate, um, man. I'm a Libra too. That's probably why we get along so good. <laughs> definitely, definitely, man. But we also mirror people. Um, we're, we're a mirror. We reflect back what people give to us. So right. if people are chill with us, we're chill with them. If they're sort of iffy with us, we can be iffy with them. Yeah, if, if it seems unbalanced, yeah. Hmm. Definitely. Um, yeah, the, the reason I asked about those three and choose to pay attention to those three is because, yeah, the sun sign is our personality, the moon sign, our emotional side. The ascendant sign is kind of how people view us, you know, like if they don't know us. And then once they talk to us and get to know us, then they see our personality, our, our sun sign. That comes out. Mm -hmm. So um, now one thing I want to comment on, would you agree that the signs are see, personalities and traits, planets are mental functions? And the houses are areas of our life. I agree with that. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Okay. All right. Cool. So that's kind of some uh, background I want to cover. Um, and then um, also in astrology, once you get so deep in astrology, it kind of leaks into planetary magic. Um, would you agree that in planetary magic, the planetary intelligence is the angel of the planet and the planetary spirit is sort of the demon of the planet? Could, could you um, repeat um, that again? Yeah, so, uh, the, the, so in planetary magic, you have the planetary intelligence, which is assigned to it, and then the planetary spirit. Now, the planetary intelligence is usually regarded as the angel uh, associated with the planet, and then planetary spirit is usually regarded as the demon of the planet. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I haven't heard that before. Now, now that, now, now I'll be honest, you know, that area of, uh, of uh, planetary magic, I just started getting into, you know, and so I just kind of took some notes and kind of wanted to get your feedback on it. So uh, I plan on delving more into it and doing a video on planetary magic kind of, uh, you know, getting into studying and, and presenting uh, new information in planetary magic. But let's go ahead and get into the signs, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to talk about every sign and the shadow aspects of every sign. So let's go ahead and start with Aries, okay? Now, Aries is, you know, they, have, they like to be number one. They have a very strong drive. They're a fire sign. I think that one thing that Aries can tend to work on is that, you know, they might have a strong, strong drive and maybe that might kind of cause them to be not sensitive to looking at 
other things that may be more important to them. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that, um, 100%. That would go into um, the more darker aspects of them, which would be the um, extreme competitiveness, uh, which yeah. can sort of shown as envy, jealousy, um, things along those lines. Um, they tend to be also the loudest in the room, I've noticed. <laughs> usually tell those on the weekend go out so yeah okay let's talk about Taurus now Taurus you know they like a lot of luxury they're an earth um, you know maybe they can you know focus on the material aspects of life too much and not pay so much attention to you know spiritual aspects what do you think Taurus I've actually met a lot of Taurus um, and David yeah. a few hours but um, they can be very materialistic, but also generous, extremely generous yeah. at the same time to those that they like or are close to. Um, yeah. But the, the stubborn th stereotype, it's true. Like, I, I find it's true most of the time. Like, once they've made their mind up, there's, yeah. there's no, there's no tra trying to change it, convince them or steer them another way. It's just tunnel vision from there on. Yeah, there's not much. I mean, if you see that they might be in the wrong, there's really nothing you can do, but allow them to just move on, you know, and just learn their lesson. Um, now let's move on to Gemini. So Gemini tends to be, you know, very busy, spontaneous, very curious. Um, they're an air sign. Um, again, they may not take the time to slow down. Um, sometimes if you're spontaneous, you have to be realistic and be like, okay, can I really, is it really worth doing this right now? You know, what do you think? Um, I think that 100%, but there's also, there, there's two sides of a coin with uh, Gemini. There's yeah. the side that presents and the side that they keep for themselves, which tends to be the more darker aspect of Gemini, which very rarely you'll see unless they want you to, um, which in particular towards enemies of theirs, they will see. But they can be extremely um, secretive uh, in nature, I find. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I agree with that. That's some good insight. Let's go ahead and move on to cancer. So uh, with cancer, you know, they're psychic, they're protective. Uh, they tend to not want to trust people easily. Um, you really got to earn their trust. You know, they're a water sign. Um, you know, maybe they can kind of close themselves off too much. And there's a lot of missed opportunities. What do you think? Mm, cancer. Uh, it's a very interesting sign that um, I tend to have a lot of them in my life. I, I meet a yeah. lot of them. Um, someone I knew actually had um, most of their navel chart all cancer, pretty much. Almost all cancer. Which oh, was wow. Something that I had never seen before yet. It was rare. That's rare, yeah. But with them, they can be extremely vengeful um, if crossed. Not the first time, but it takes a while to push a cancer to that level but once they're at that level it, it's yeah it's payback time you know but they're very very quiet about it and it's very well, I mean, yeah look how aggressive the crab can you know you mm. push it there you go I'm, that's just the nature of it definitely but at the same time if they're hurt they'll sort of like snip the connection off and yeah just vanish just, you know they'll, yeah yeah just be kind of cold there uh, let's move on to Leo. So, you know, Leo tends to like spotlight, you know, likes to uh, celebrate, um, can be very dramatic. You know, they're a fire sign. Um, of course, they can be over over dramatic sometimes. What are your thoughts on that? Um, 100%. They're also extremely territorial in um, relationships and friendships even. Um, they, they can be a very jealous sign. Um, oh yeah yeah definitely extremely fiery as well they they're very passionate though that they, they will fight for what they're passionate for um, right it's a yeah it's a great sign um to be friends with because they'll they'll fight with you if right. you need if you need someone to fight with you they'll have your back um and they typically don't ask for anything in return you know um but at some point they will weigh up the relationship i've noticed agreed 
So now let's talk about Virgo. So, you know, Virgo can be very busy. Uh -huh. They tend to be perfectionists. Um, they tend to, um, I think sometimes they can, it, not everything has to be perfect. Not everything has to be neat. You know, um, sometimes just let things be. What are your thoughts on uh, Virgo? Virgo, I find um, very social but shy at the same time. It's a very strange Strange mix of the two. Um, <laughs> they love to to make connections, but they're very soft. You know, right. until they're not soft, then yeah. But. Right. I know. Agreed. Now let's talk about our sun, Libra. Balance. Of course, this is an air sign. Um, I know that I'm constantly trying to keep things in balance, and I'll be the first to admit that if things tend to be unbalanced. Um, I can get in the mood swings. And that's something that I need to work on. What do, what do you think? What about you? Yeah, I, I'm the exact same there. Um, <laughs> I struggle to keep balance. Like, and once things are unbalanced, like, I can't do anything else unless they're balanced. Um, the, yeah. The mood swings, definitely. But with us as well, um, I've noticed uh, that that mirror effect I was talking about before, you know, yeah. um, that goes back to the scales. You know, whatever someone puts on the scales will affect the whole detriment of how we are interact with them as well. We have to sort of keep things fair, even. We're all about justice. Um, if we see something that it, we believe is an injustice, it strikes us to our core. Like, we can't sit there and just watch it. We can't it. chill if we see it. Mm. It's, you know, it's, we just got to um, get up and, and do something. Definitely, 100%. <laughs> it goes back to Lady Justice with the scales as well. Yeah. Mm. Agreed. Agreed. And it's good to talk to another Libra. You know, it makes it interesting. So um, now Scorpio. Uh, Scorpio is a sign that's uh, very misunderstood, um, very mysterious. Um, but they tend to have strong emotional drive. But I think they maybe get their emotional drive from their psychic abilities. What do you think? So Scorpio is the sign of death, um, which is typically also why they could be understood. It's seen as something to be feared, something to be um, backed away from. And they are very intense, um, especially in romantic relationships, even friendships, right? And right. they are considerate, I find, as well. Um, similar to Leo, they're very loyal. They'll just give and give and give. Right. Um, but when... It comes to matters of betrayal or revenge, like they, they get it back, like definitely a lot of water signs are like that, I've noticed as well. <laughs> yeah, um, that's true. Involved. Um, but yeah, uh, Scorpio, very psychic. They're able to look at the whole picture as well in sort of a one go, if that makes sense. Right. Um, they see the whole entirety of a situation or um, even gnosis wise, they can just have it all, see it all. And they're very detective-like. They love to delve into the mysteries and finer details of things as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. Now let's go ahead and talk about Sagittarius. Now Sagittarius can be very adventurous, um, very intellectual. Um, I feel that maybe some, you know, like the sign, they like to you know, shoot their arrows, you know, towards their goals or, but I think that sometimes if sometimes they maybe tend to that can cause them to wander in places where either they shouldn't be or they're just not meant to be at that time. What do you think about that? I agree with that 100 percent. They're also very vocal. Um, they express what they want, what they're thinking, how they're feeling a lot more than Leo um, and Aries, I find as well. Um especially the aggression. My Mars is in Sagittarius. So, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it explains the whole fighter thing. Um, right. Excellent fighters. Um, not just because of my thing, but other Sagittariuses like Andrew Tate, etc. A lot of them are actually mainly Sagittarius. They enjoy conflict a little too much sometimes. Yeah, I agree. You know, they are, a, they are a fireside. So, <laughs> Um, let's talk about Capricorn. So uh, to Capricorn, time is very valuable. 
Um, you know, they can be patient, um, very skilled at you know being emotional. They're an earth sign. Um, I think sometimes um, when they're too patient, maybe they can kind of be taken advantage. Of. What do you think about that? Definitely. Um, Capricorn, yes? Capricorn. Yeah. yeah. Um, excellent at business in terms of building business, the physical aspect of it. Um, and they're very disciplined, I've noticed. They yeah. enjoy the grind. They're, they're hard workers. Um, yeah. But at the same time, they struggle with balance um, themselves. And they're very... They're very they can snap. I've seen it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they can snap. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's like a, a goat or a ram. Like mm -hmm. they're very friendly creatures or animals, but when they do decide not to be, like it just, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Just, they ram. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Now, Aquarius, um, when it comes down to it, um, you know, Aquarius can be very innovative, but really at the end of the day, they really just want to make the world a better place. Um, they are not a water sign, they're an air sign. But um, as far as you know, being innovative or revolutionary, sometimes maybe it's better for them to kind of, not in all situations, but some to kind of just build off of what's already there. What do you think? Mm -hmm. With Aquarius, I find that whatever field they choose to focus on most of life, be right. it career-wise or, you know, in any aspect of their life, right. they will excel in to a point where they push the limits of it and then expand into some new territory, um, revolutionizing the subject, um, becoming very well known in it. Um, but at the same time, that leads to being misunderstood. Um with genius comes a touch of madness, as they say, right? So when Very you're true. creating something new, uh, revolutionizing or changing something, being the, the winds or, of change, so to speak, it, there's going to be people who misunderstand and then misinterpret. Right. I 100% agree with that. Now let's talk about uh, the last one, Pisces. Uh, Pisces can be very psychic, very empathetic. Um, they have constant attention between fantasy and reality, um, switching between the two. But I don't think at times, at times, sometimes they can blend the two and maybe their vision kind of get clouded. What do you think about that? They're a water sign. Mm, the fish. Yeah. Um, with what you said at the end, blending reality with fantasy, um, yeah. that can be a perfect recipe for manifestation at the same time. Like they can really build something or manifest something they want, but at the same time, it can also right. go very bad, I've noticed. Um, very polite, extremely polite, but when upset with um, a person, at first they'll sort of back off and like they can't even be in the same room. They won't even want to look at the person. Um, that's something I've noticed as well, but in terms of aggression, it's hard. I've, it's very rare that you see one. Um, gets that level um, right yeah 100 percent, man so that covers all the shadow sides of the signs and a little bit of astrological uh, history so yeah that's that's uh, all we've got for this video here uh, it's been a wonderful chat um everyone who's watching uh, check out uh, cult of belly out um links will be below in the video description check out the youtube channel check out their Facebook group, which is very insightful. A lot of good info on that. Um, Anton, thanks once again for coming on, brother. Thank you for having me on, bro. It's an honor. All right. And everyone who's watching, like and subscribe to Dark Sorcerer.